I have built a lot of AI applications on my channel over the last couple of months. And the most requested follow-up is that I would make a video on how to deploy them to the cloud. So I am super excited to bring you exactly that today. We're going to take the local AI starter kit by N8N that I did a deep dive into last month and deploy that to the cloud. Don't get me wrong, it is really fun to build your AI apps locally and get them set up and working. But in the end, when you want something for real that has other users on your platform, it cannot be stuck in your development environment. Simply put, you have to make it accessible on the internet for other people to use in a secure way. Deploying your applications can be a bit tricky. I am not going to sugarcoat it, but that is why I'm gonna break it down step-by-step step for you now so that it feels like a walk in the park. We'll cover using a custom URL, setting up HTTPS, and getting your N8N workflows to connect to the other local AI services in this new setup. On top of that, we are going to keep Olama and the databases secure so that they are only accessible within the N8N workflows. I am gonna be deploying the local AI starter kit to the cloud since that is the most popular solution that I have covered. But I will explain throughout this video how what I'm doing will make it possible to deploy literally anything that runs on localhost with a port on your computer a Streamlit application, Olama, a Next.js app if you don't want to deploy it to Vercel, a Docker container that deploys something with the URL, and the list goes on. So no matter what you are building, this applies to you. So without further ado, let's dive in. So first, a little bit of an overview of what I'm deploying to the cloud right now. Again, you can use what I'm showing you now to deploy anything to the cloud, but I'm picking this specifically because I have to choose something, and this is the most popular solution that I have covered on my channel. And so what this is, it is a local AI starter kit by the N8N team. And so what it does is it packages together Olama for your LLMs, Quadrant for your vector database for RAG, Postgres for your SQL database for things like chat memory, and then also N8N for your workflow automations. It is an amazing tool. And again, I did a deep dive into this tool and how to set it up on another video on my channel. But the primary thing here is all of these services are running on your local host when you have this running on your computer. And so N8N, for example, would be on localhost port 5678. And so that's fine when you just wanna access it yourself on your computer, but when you actually wanna deploy it, you want a URL like n8n.yourdomain.com that would then redirect to the instance of N8N that's running on port 5678 on the machine that you're hosting it on in the cloud. So that is what I'm gonna show you how to do right now. So for my cloud provider today, I chose DigitalOcean. I really, really prefer DigitalOcean for most use cases. And so I'm just gonna keep it simple using what I'm really comfortable with here. The one thing I'll say that it's not the best with is when you want to have a really powerful machine in the cloud to to run really, really good large language models like 3.2 9DB, for example. In that case, you're probably gonna want a machine from a service like RunPod, which is what I'd recommend for that. They have a lot of different options to get very powerful machines with a lot of VRAM to run those larger models. But in my case, I'm just gonna use smaller models. And also if you're deploying something like a Streamlit app or a Next.js app, you don't need a lot of power. And so yeah, DigitalOcean just has really good offerings for that. So I'm not affiliated with RunPod or DigitalOcean, but these are just my preferences for those different use cases. And so once you're signed into DigitalOcean, you can go in the top right and click on create here. They do have GPU droplets, but um, they're pretty limited in their offerings right now, which is why I recommend RunPod for the beefier machine. So I'm just gonna click on a droplet here and create something pretty basic. And so I'll walk you through step-by-step step very quickly what I have here so you can have the exact same machine as me if you would like. I'll leave the region and data center the same. And then for my image here, I'm gonna to go to the marketplace and choose Docker for Ubuntu. So this is the only thing that might be a little different for you if you have a different distribution of Linux or if you aren't using Linux, then the steps that I'm gonna go through now aren't gonna be exactly the same. Because even if you're using Linux, you might have a distribution with a different package manager like Yum, for example. But if you have a Linux machine in the cloud with Ubuntu, the steps are gonna be exactly the same no matter what cloud provider you are using. And so I'm trying to make this tutorial here very cloud provider agnostic. And so it doesn't really matter if you're using DigitalOcean or not, as long as you've got an Ubuntu Linux machine, and that is really, really standard anyway. So I'd recommend that. 
And then for the droplet size, I'll just choose the largest uh, basic plan, one that's available to me, because I want some good CPU here. Um, and then for the password, I'm just going to get that from another screen that I have up here. Uh, this is also where we're going to be referencing the steps as I go through it with you guys. So I'll just paste that in. And then I'll leave everything else the same. I guess I can change the host name here. I'll just say YouTube uh, AI app deploy. All right. And then this is looking good. So I'll go ahead and click on create droplet. And then it takes about like 30 seconds to a minute. It is super, super fast. And then we'll be able to log into our droplet. So there we go. After just like a minute, like I said, my droplet is now ready for me to access. So I can just click on the three dots right here, click on access console, and then launch droplet console. And boom, that is it. We are now connected into our machine and we can go ahead and enter in any commands that we want. So now as promised, I get to walk you through step-by-step -step how to deploy an AI application to the cloud with this local AI starter kit as an example. I have done nothing on this machine at this point. So this is gonna be from start to finish every single step that you need. On another monitor here, I have all the steps that I'm going to copy and paste that can also be nice and quick so you don't have to watch me type everything out. Um, so the very first command that we have here is going to be to clone our Git repository for the local AI starter kit. And then now that I have uh, cloned it, I have this new folder here that I can change my directory into. And so now with that, there's a couple of things that we want to edit that I went over in my last video on this as well. So first of all, we have our .env file. So I'm gonna do nano.env because we have to set up a couple of things here for Postgres and also our N8N security. And so for Postgres, you can change your username and password to sign into the database and you're gonna set this as part of your credentials in N8N. And then also the name of the database. So I'm just gonna be deleting this instance after this video. So I'm gonna leave it all as the same. And I'm also going to just show you these secrets that I type here because it really doesn't matter um, since I'm getting rid of this. And so for these secrets, you can really just type in whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. It just has to be something that you don't wanna share because these are encryption keys that you are creating yourself. Um, and so I'm just gonna kinda type in whatever here and then leave everything the same for Postgres. But you can change this to fit your needs as well. And then to exit out of this, it's going to be control X or command X if you're on Mac and then Y to save and then enter and then boom, there we go. So now if I do a cat.env, I can see that my updates to this file have been made. And so now I'm also going to change the Docker compose file too, because there is one thing that I want to add in my Olama container to actually pull the things that I want when this runs because otherwise I'm going to have to pull those at runtime to have the models I want available to me in the NAN workflows. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to copy what I want this line to be right here. So this, this command is what runs when the Olama container starts and I want to add in another model. So I'm going to pull the embedding model as well. Nomic embed text because without this available, we don't actually have a model available to us for our embeddings for rag. And so I'm just making that one update here. Like I made in my other video, again, control X, Y, enter, boom, and we have those updates made. So now we've made all the changes that we need in our source control here, and we can move on to our firewall steps. And so now before we actually run anything with these containers, we need to get a few things set up. And that's what I'm going to walk you through here, starting with the firewalls. And so the first command that I'm going to run here is sudo ufw enable. Now this command doesn't actually need to be run in the Docker DigitalOcean droplet, but for a lot of your different droplets or if you're using a different cloud provider, you have to make sure that ufw is enabled for firewalls. And so I'm going to do that. And now we can do some enabling. And so the next command that I'm gonna run here is going to be to open up ports 80 and 443. Without these open, in a later step when we set up our SSL cert for HTTPS, it will fail. So we have to run these and get that set up. And then we will do a sudo UFW reload so that we can apply those rules for the firewall. So there we go, that is everything we need. Firewall reloaded, perfect. Now we can move on to our next step. Um, Cause again, there's a couple of things we have to do before we actually run anything here for our containers. And so I'm gonna paste in the next step here. And that is to install Nginx. Nginx is a reverse proxy. And that is what's gonna make it possible for set it, to set it up so that there is a URL that a user visits. And then behind the scenes, it routes that request to N8N that is running on the local host here on port 5678. And you'll see when I set up the configuration for N8N, how it makes that connection. And so let me do sudo apt install nginx. 
I will continue with this operation and it's going to take a little bit to install uh, because NAN or Nginx is a little bit larger here. Uh, but in the meantime, I'll just copy the next command here. Um, and then, yep, there we go. So it was only like you know, 15 seconds, even though it was bigger, nice and quick. And then I'll paste in the next command here. Um, and so this is where it gets a little technical with Nginx. We have to set up all of the reverse proxy configuration, but just bear with me because it's not that hard overall. There's only a few commands that we have to do, even though it might be a little more technical. And so the next one I'm gonna do is I'm going to go into this Nginx configuration for an application that I'm going to create. And this is where we start the config to make it possible to have a URL that points to a specific port in this machine. And then I'm gonna paste in some config here, which I'll have available for you to copy in the description of this video. And I actually should mention that all of the steps that I'm running here, I will have there for you in the description for you to copy so you don't have to type out anything yourself. The one thing that I'll say for this config is that it gets really nitpicky with tabs and spaces. I would recommend just sticking with spaces and having two spaces per tab. So right here, it's just two spaces. And then for these that are indented one level deeper, it is four spaces. So make sure that you have all these as spaces. Otherwise, sometimes you will get errors that'll tell you that it's not recognizing characters in that line, weird things like that. Um, but yeah, you can see here, that I have my domain, n8n.dynamis.ai, that is listening on port 80. 80 is the default port for when you are visiting a website with HTTP. And so we'll set up HTTPS later, but when you visit this site on HTTP, you are then redirected to localhost port 5678, and that is where we have n8n hosted. And you can see how if you have a Next.js app on port 3000, or a Streamlit app on port 5601, whatever it is, you would just set that here, and that's how you can reverse proxy to get your URL to point to this right here, this localhost and this port. And so this is how you can use it to literally deploy anything that you want on the cloud. And so again, making that connection back to other things as well, so I'm not just focusing on the local AI starter kit. Uh, but anyway, that out of the way, I'll do a control X again, Y enter, and boom, we are good to go. So next up, we need to actually enable the application. We do this by creating a symbolic link from the folder that we created in the sites available folder to the sites enabled folder within Nginx. So I'm gonna run this, and now that'll actually make it so that our URL is gonna be set up to go to localhost port 5678 for N8N. And then I can run a command to test that our configuration is set up correctly and that our site is enabled. And for that, we can run the command sudo nginx dash t and this is going to tell us if everything is looking good and so yep it says the syntax is okay the test is successful and we are good to go all right and so with that i'm going to simply do a reload here so i'm going to copy this command paste it in do a reload and we can go ahead and move on to our cert now before we get our ssl certificate for https so our site is secure we need to go into our dns settings now so you could have done this really at any point in the last like 10 steps so i'm just going to do it now because it's required for ssl and so all you have to do is go to your digital ocean droplet right here so i'm in the settings for my droplet and copy your ipv4 and then you're going to take that and then go into your dns provider so i am using namecheap uh, but whether you're using bluehost squarespace namecheap it doesn't matter you're going to have some place that looks like this where you go into your settings and you can view it'll be called like dns DNS settings, advanced DNS, some view within your provider that gives you all of your records here, like text records, CNN records, A records. So find that right here. And then you wanna add a new record. So it'll be an A record. The host will be N8N or whatever subdomain that you picked to host. And then for your IP address, you paste in the IPv4 of the DigitalOcean droplet. And so there we go. I've added this A record and we are good to go back to DigitalOcean to now set up our SSL search. So that is everything that you have to do within your DNS settings. It is super, super simple. And so now moving on, what we can do is install CertBot. That's what we're gonna use for our SSL cert. Now I had to verify some things off camera, so I already ran this command, but I promise I really have been doing this from scratch. I just had to quickly do that off camera. So you can see that's why it said it was already installed, but you'll install that. It might take a little bit. And then after you can run the command to set up the cert for your domain. So um, for me, it's gonna be n8n.dynamis.ai. And again, I already ran this command. And so it's going to ask me if I want to 
um, yeah, I can just say renew and replace the certificate. It'll be different settings where I'll have you enter in your email and agree to their terms and conditions. If you haven't done this already, I'm just going to renew this certificate here. Um, but the message that we get as a success is going to look very similar here where it says deploying certificate and then it successfully deployed the certificate. And that is it. We now have everything set up for Nginx and CertBot for SSL. So we can finally run our containers and start up our local AI starter kit. So I know that some of these steps were kind of technical, but again, you just got to bear with me through it. Um, and I hope that this makes it really, really clear. So again, ask me in the comments if you have any questions on these things, but now we can actually run this thing. And so I'm going to change my directory back into our self-hosted AI starter kit. And then I can copy the command to run this with Docker Compose. And so you can run this with the GPU as well. There are instructions in the README for the local AI starter kit repo on how to run this if you're going to use Mac or if you are want to use your NVIDIA GPU. I'm just going to use the CPU because I have a very basic digital ocean droplet. And then I'm including the dash D flag for detached, because if you don't include this, then your terminal will actually hang as it waits for more logs from the Docker containers. And so I'm just going to run this here and it's going to take a little bit longer for you because you're going to have to pull all of these images. I did this ahead of time, so you don't have to wait for all of that to pull. Um, but when it starts successfully, you're going to get a view that looks like this where we have all of our containers running and then the ones that are just run for the setup like any import will say exited, uh, but it'll be in green because that means that it was successful. So we are good to go. And you can even do a Docker um, compose log if you want to see the logs from all the containers. So this is what's currently being spit out in the logs and this will update in real time. So as I make requests to NAN and Postgres and all that, I can run this command again to see all of my logs that are happening in real time. And you can also do other Docker compose commands like Docker compose down or stop if you want to destroy the containers. You can do all of the commands to manage the containers with Docker compose and then just the name of that argument that you want to add to delete or be the logs, whatever it might be. And that is everything that we need. So we can now go into the browser and go to n8n.dynamis.ai or whatever your URL is. And boom, we now have access to our n8n instance that is running on our DigitalOcean droplet. And so I'm gonna set up my account really quick. I'll just kind of put in whatever here. Um, because we got to create our account the first time that we're in. Because I really am doing this from scratch here. So I'll set up my account and there we go. And so I'm going to um, actually import a workflow that I had from a previous video, pause and come back once I have that. All right, so I have imported my workflow from my previous videos and we are going to quickly set up the connections here so that I can show you how to get everything working in the NAN workflows now that we're hosted in the cloud. And so if you have followed these instructions to this point to deploy a Next.js app or Streamlit app or something like that. This obviously wouldn't apply there, but at this point, your Streamlit or Next.js app or whatever you're trying to deploy is working now. And so this is just a little bit of a bonus for if you are deploying the local AI starter kit specifically. And so to set up the credentials here, first I'm going to click into Olama. I'm going to uh, create new credentials here. And then for the base URL, actually what you can do is because this is all set up with Docker Compose, each service that is within the Docker Compose file as a separate container can reference the name of the other service in Docker Compose. So we specifically call our Olama container just Olama. So I can reference it like this. The port is 11434. I'll go ahead and click save and then my connection is successful. So there we go. We are good to go. And then for Postgres, it's gonna be a very similar deal here. So the host is going to be just Postgres, because that's the name of the service in the Docker Compose file. And then the database is N8N. My user, I believe, was just Postgres. Um, actually, let me verify that really quickly here. What did I call my user? Let me uh, go back to my environment file and check that. Okay, I called it root. That's right. Okay, so uh, the user is root, not three O's. And then the password I just had as password. Um, and there we go. So I'll go ahead and click save. And we got that connection as well. So we are looking really good. And then the last one right here is just to get quadrant set up. So I'm going to select my credentials here. And then the API key can actually be whatever you want because this is running locally. It doesn't actually matter and it won't break the connection. And then the um, right here for the URL, it's just going to be quadrant, HTTP, quadrant, and then the port is 6333. 
go ahead and click save. This connection is good as well. And that is everything. So now I'm going to go back and then set up the same thing for um, Olama really quick for the embeddings. And um, then, yeah, we can go ahead and test it out. So I'm, I'm just using Llama, um, yeah, 3.18b right now. It's not the best with rag. So I'm just going to delete this tool right here um, and just have a quick chat message with it because I don't want it to go through the whole rag process right now. So I'll just say hi and make sure that my connection with Postgres and Olama is working good. There we go. We got a response from Llama 3.18b. So everything is looking really, really good. Couple of last notes here. It says that it's dangerous in my URL bar here, but I think that's just because I've been playing around with the SSL certs a lot, testing this out and getting it set up, deploying it to different DigitalOcean droplets. And so typically you won't see that. It'll be a good SSL cert right away. Um, and then the other thing that I wanted to mention here is that the rest of this workflow uh, with the Google Drive ingesting of documents for RAG and all of that, that is going to be um, something that you can find in other videos on my channel. So I'll reference that as well. If you're curious about how this workflow all works in N8N, I obviously just wanted to focus on how to get this deployed in the cloud today. So there you have it. You now have what it takes to deploy anything that runs on localhost with a port on your computer to the cloud. And it's really important to do that to actually take your application to production. So I hope that you found this really, really valuable and clear. If you have any questions about this process or creating AI applications in general, just let me know in the comments and I will answer for sure. So if you appreciate this content, I would really appreciate a like and a subscribe. And with that, I will see you in the next video.